Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace and today is Monday, May 24th. Um, this is a podcast about knitting books, baking, and cats, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do all day, every day. And the cat is sitting on the bed amongst all the clean laundry and he's very distracting. I really just want to snuggle with him all day as yes, I do. that pet voice. We all have one. We talk to our pets. Um, <laughs> I have um, all the various social medias. If you'd like to go and follow me on any of them, I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. I'm most active on Instagram. Please go follow me over on there. I also have show notes. So the links to things that I will be talking about, if I remember everything, will be linked. Um, that is on my blog, so if you are on YouTube, the link to my blog is down below, and if you are on my blog already, everything is already there. Um, I am also starting work at the beginning of June at Pearly Girls, which is a yarn shop out in Spring, Old Town Spring, Texas, which is truly wonderful, and I'm so excited. Um, if you would like to check out their uh, website or social medias, all that will be linked in my show notes as well. Um, or if you're local, come hang out. It's a wonderful group of ladies um, and we would love to see you. So I don't really have a ton of today to talk about. I honestly don't know how long this episode is going to be, but we're going to be positive and also realistic because that's necessary, you know? <laughs> this is silly intro. Let us get to the actual podcast. If you like to grab something tasty to drink, something to snack upon, something to craft upon, an animal to snuggle, I'm watching my cat be cute while he sleeps. Um, you could be on your lunch break, you could be working out, you could be doing whatever it brings you joy, and you can come back and join me for some crafty chat. So yeah, I am back in my normal spot um it was funny what was funny I don't know things are funny (laughs) um when I recorded last week um and I had to sit in a different location because it was so dark and stormy um little did I know how bad it was gonna get because it got really bad the that following evening was it that night I don't know it's whatever the weather post me saying that and editing me was like wow I didn't really see any of that coming I don't think anybody did it was quite intense um and we've had very heavy rain for very long times at this point and I think it's trying to decide if it's done or if it's still going to rain right now. So I see a little bit of blue sky, but it's cloudy out that way. So who knows? Also, yes, it's almost the end of May and I am wearing a long sleeve sweatshirt, which is one of my favorites. It says Stars Hollow and it's Gilmore Girls themed if you are unfamiliar. Um, Sam got this for me for Christmas and it's one of my favorite things ever. I just love it. I also like the color. It's also very comfortable. It's very cozy. Um, so yes, I've gotten a lot of knitting done. This is, I'm not saying that I haven't done a lot of knitting. Also, I'm very irritated with my hair because of the rain and the humidity. It just poofs more than normal. It always poofs, but there's a certain extent to which it stops, and I am particularly with my bangs, but so I apologize if I can't stop touching my hair, but it's just not cooperating or doing what I wanted to do or looking how I wanted to look. But again, this is reality. This is just normal, average life. It happens to everyone. Um, I've gotten a lot of knitting done. It's just the the number of projects that I worked on have been very low. And I know that's, it's been that way for the past couple of weeks. Um, 
there's just been a lot going on because also this happened and there's just so much going on, you know? I don't realize um, what all is going on. Okay, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so last week was uh, both very sad and very happy at the same time. My parents officially moved away from Houston. They're no longer living in Houston. Um, they're no longer 20 minutes away from where Sam and I live. Uh, they are now living in Colorado, which is super exciting. They're in the Eagle Edwards Vale area. Hence, Maker and Stitch is my mom's new local yarn shop, and that's just really amazing. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just, it's been, um, just a lot of work getting all the moving stuff and ready to go and helping them with that and so my knitting time has been down and then it's also just sad to say goodbye and saying goodbye to the house that I kind of that I grew up here in Houston it's going to wonderful people it's all it's very bittersweet like there's there's definitely sadness it's sad it's very sad but it's also very happy um, and again, that's a reality. <laughs> that's just the way things are. Um, so, not touching my hair. Um, <laughs> so my knitting has been down just because I've, like, been busy, I've been tired, I've been just doing other things. And, um, I had so much fun with my parents, um, last week when we were finishing everything up cleaning their house. We got to hang out pretty much all day the day before they left and that was super fun. A lot of knitting was had and done and it was just really great so on to new chapters new things new local yarn shops which are just it's just very exciting and yeah so that's why my knitting is low and that's okay because again this is reality and is this the the theme of this episode of what reality is I'm not going to sit in front of you and pretend that I have had a perfect week of knitting because I haven't. And that's, again, it's reality. Um, so, <laughs> I have things that I wanted to work on and things that, like, I meant to work on and just all this other stuff. And it's just, it just didn't happen. And I think I, um, somewhat successfully balanced, like, needing to rest and not doing anything including knitting and I think that's okay. I think that's very important. Um, I don't think I worked on any of that. I pull, I brought in my big like carry around bag and um, my lumpy space is in here. We can talk about it. How about that? We'll talk about my lumpy space even though I never actually worked on it last week but that's okay. Um, First off, let's just show, talk about this because it is on the top. This is not my lumpy space. This is my um, wool and honey that I did get a decent amount of progress on. Um, I say that. I'm now looking at my progress keeper. It's not a ton. But it was something. I did try. I know last week I mentioned maybe dividing for the sleeves, which was very ambitious of me. But um, that did not happen. This is where my progress keeper was, and this is where I am. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's normal. If you don't feel like knitting, don't knit. If it won't bring you joy, if it'll only make you tired, if you feel like falling asleep while knitting, you don't need to knit. It's really okay. Just just relax. Um, <laughs> this is my Wool and Honey sweater by Andrea Mowry. This is a top-down um, fingering weight sweater. We have slip stitches, we have elongated stitches, and we have cables, um, which sounds and looks very fancy, but in fact it is not. You just have to keep track of your pattern, um, and indeed you will create these beautiful little honeycombs because they are just amazing. My yarn... I happen to have a fresh ball of yarn with other yarn and needles stuck to it. That's fun. You said prepared. I'm prepared for my sleeve. That's what they're for. Um, this is Knit Picks Palette in the Pumice Heather colorway. Please focus. There we go. And it's just this very grayish. 
it's gray and beige, but it's gray and brown. Brown? Ooh, I don't like the sound of that. It's not a very pleasant sounding word. It's covered in cat hair and also my hair. Hmm. There's more cat hair. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this yarn. It's a great uh, price point. There are a bazillion colors. It wears well. It lasts a long time. Um, it's not like the softest thing in the world, but it's very not scratchy. Um, and it only gets softer with wear. So I've had this yarn for this project for a long time, and goodness gracious, I have taken my sweet time. Um, but just enjoying the process, you know? This is not a product pro project. This is a process project. Um, so yeah, I am just really loving this. I am 20 rows away from dividing for the sleeves, and um, though that doesn't sound like much, we need to keep in mind that my rows are very, very long. Um, <laughs> and I'm still doing increase rounds. I think actually that's what I'm on right now, is an increase round. Um, which are important. It's not that I don't want to do the increases. It's just that they take forever. And then it makes the row significantly longer. So. Oh well. It is what it is. It's just the nature of knitting a sweater. A top down sweater. But I do love it. And I'm very excited to be able to wear it. On days like today. You know. Because we got this random weather. Makes me kind of concerned for hurricane season, but we won't think about that right now, you know. I just love this. I think this stitch definition, also with the palette, is just super, super squishy and has made such a nice texture. Um, and yeah, I would um, highly recommend if you are looking for a more cost effective yarn for this sweater, because I know that um, uh, Andrea Mauer used Loft from Brooklyn Tweed, and though that is a beautiful, and I love a good loft moment, it is definitely higher up in the price range, which is totally understandable because it is quite amazing yarn. And there's obviously really nice yarns like um, Biches Bish and Bouches, Bish and Bouche, um, that has the lamb's wool is really good for that um, as well. Um, but even lower than that is Nipix palette and I'm quite happy with how it's turning out so would highly recommend if you if you've been on the the edge of knitting the sweater and you just don't know what yarn you would use or you don't want to use loft but you also don't want to spend an arm and a leg um, I would highly recommend you checking out the palette color selection because they also have quite a few um, colors that are similar to the original one that um, Andrea Mallory made. So that bright um, orange, like burnt orange, is just so beautiful. And yes, I went to a &M, and yes, I bleed maroon and blah, blah, blah. But I still love burnt orange. Like there's, it's like the specific like UT orange I'm not necessarily a fan of, but I genuinely don't like that color anyway. Um, it's not my favorite, but I do love burnt orange. So maybe that makes me a bad Aggie, but I don't really care. <laughs> this is the reality of my color preferences. You know, it's just the way that I work. Um, also in this bag, I didn't work on this this week. At least I don't remember that I did. I'm pretty sure that I didn't. I had intentions of working on it and I just didn't. And that's okay. That's okay. That's totally fine. You know what? But we're still going to talk about it because it's super fun and I am loving working on it. And I knew that this part would slow me down. Like the fact that I flew through section one and section two within like the span of a week. <laughs> um, I knew those long rows were coming and I knew that it would slow me down and it wouldn't be like a two week Stephen West project that just is not something that 
I'm sure it exists. I, I'm positive that there are incredible knitters out there that have knit his stuff in very short amount of time. Short amounts of time. Um, that is not me. I also really enjoy the process. So again, this is more of a process project than a product project, which is such a tongue twister. I have to think about that. Goodness gracious. Um, so this is Lumpy Space by Stephen West. Um, I am... I have four different colors. This inside color is Farmer Daughter's Fibers in the Foxy Lady base, and it, the colorway is Rough Customer. It's not Tough Customer, it's Rough Customer. And it, am I right? <laughs> I got it right! Go me! Go me! Okay, can I get the others? Um, so then this section is striped with the blue and there's a gray in there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it is there. Um, the blue is Hue Loco. It's this, the singles base. I don't remember the name of that. But the name of it has... Oh, it's a cold word. I kept thinking cold. Hoarfrost. That's what it is. Can we test myself? This is like the new thing. Single sock. Okay, that's... And I was right. Ha ha! Look at me go. And now it's in focus, so the camera is also being successful. Go us. Um, next up, the gray. Now I'm showing it to you. There we go. The gray is Manos del... Uruguay and the Fina base and it is antique lace and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I got it right. Fino, not Fina. What was I thinking? I know it's Fino. I, I got it right. That's basically it. And then this fun color, this green color, is um, Farmer's Daughter's Fibers in the Odang base and it's really weird. Kinnick kinnick kinnicky kinnickinny kit kit <laughs> I don't know. I was close I mean I I knew what it was. I just don't I don't know how to say this. So we're gonna count that as me getting it right. So kinnick kinnick. I didn't remember that, but I did get it right. So, I successfully remembered all the bases and names for this wonderful Stephen West shawl. Um, oh, maybe I did work on this. This may be from a previous week and, week and I could be totally wrong. But this is um, a backwards Pop-Tart. This is a Pop-Tart from Little Bitty Delights that I also love. I have several of her Progress Keepers on my things right now. Um, the sugar donut on my wool and honey was also from her. I also have a, another surprise, um, whoop, ooh, ooh. <laughs> this is not working, um, Gilmore Girl themed stitch marker from A Needle Runs Through It. I, th like, those stitch markers are some of my favorite, like, fancy, beginning of round stitch markers. I just, I love them. And Gilmore Girls is just so comforting. I love it so much. It's just really amazing. It brings me joy and it also brings me peace and I think that is wonderful. So I really love using my Gilmore Girl um, stitch markers with my sweatshirt and I'm pretty sure this Pop-Tart that I just showed you was marketed as a, like, a Gilmore Girl food. Because I know that, um, Manda is also a big Gilmore Girls fan, um, of Little Bitty Delight, so. It's just a fully Gilmore Girl project. Um, so. I love it. It's the best. Time for some coffee. <laughs> that was such a Gilmore Girl thing to say. I didn't even think about that. Perfect. 
I always do this every time I record at at least at one point while recording I'm just I just stop and get distracted and browse Instagram for a while because I can't stop looking at Instagram sometimes I'm pretty good about it but I think it's just because I'm sitting here and like I'm tired <laughs> is like I want to look at pretty pictures so let's just look at Instagram oh wait I'm actually recording right now I gotta stay focused so that was my lumpy space we had coffee we talked about the Gilmore Girls it was a wonderful moment um, next up everyone I did accomplish this this was the one goal that I said last week that I really wanted to do and in fact I did accomplish it and I'm very proud of myself um, I did have to like focus and like not make myself do it necessarily but I was I had to be very mindful about it and I was like okay I said I was gonna get this done I need to do it for Monday so I can show my wonderful beautiful friends on the podcast um, that I did in fact do it because I um, the month is almost over and this is supposed to be a month knit along of sorts. It's also not going to look like anything because it's currently inside out, which I'll explain in a moment. Here's my, this looks like nothing, but it's a top. This is my Summer Sorrel by Wool and Pine, not Wool and Pine, but Wool and Pine on Instagram. Um, this is a, the May did along with, um, or at the Pearly Girls, which is super fun. We have um, very much enjoyed seeing everybody's um, and just getting to work on this together. I'm going to try and turn this out inside out so you can see what this looks like. And I divided for my sleeves, which is really great, which means I'm just now like flying on my body, which has been truly wonderful. <laughs> I've been so happy. Oh my goodness. Can we even people like what the poop? I did try this on and it was kind of hard because I hadn't divided for my sleeves yet. Um, so we're going to analyze the neckline at a later time, but I, I have tried it on because I did lengthen my yoke a little bit about an inch ish inch and a half. I don't know. Um, now as I'm looking at that, that doesn't look like inch, an inch and a half, but I know that whatever it is, it'll be fine. This neckline is so wide. What? We're not worrying about this right now. But anyway, so this is the summer sorrel. We do have, this is blowing out of the camera. Like this is just not even remotely showing up what it is. Um, <laughs> this top pink color is Gossip by Hedgehog Fibers. This purple color is um, Purple Tang by Hedgehog Fibers. And then I'll be using Beach Bunny as my third color. Um, which I should be starting to fade in soon if I've done my math estimation correctly. And wow, we have another Gilmore Girls stitch marker. You know, because they're everywhere and I love them. Um, I have really enjoyed working on this. I'm going to turn this back inside out so we can see my progress. Obviously, I had not divided for the sleeves last time I showed this to you, so we do have that. But, um, I think I actually have two progress keepers on here because why not decorate your knitting with progress keepers? I know they, they bother some people and I totally respect that, but like, I love a good progress keeper. It's like jewelry for your knitting. Same thing goes for stitch markers. Um, so, I'm trying to remember what day I did this on because I marked the days, kind of. Um, so I do know, well, okay, so this Yoda Grogu Donut from, again, Little Bitty Delights. Um, that was marking kind of when I divided for the sleeves and I think I did that Friday. Did I do that Friday? I think I did that Friday. It was either Friday or Saturday. No, it was Friday. It was definitely Friday. Um, so then I kind of, I um, made a bunch of progress then on Saturday and then I put in this new guy 
which is another progress keeper from another one of my um, favorite stitch marker progress keeper makers, and that is Hand Stitch Life. My name is Jen. I know it is kind of hard to see, but I felt like it went with the vibes of this. Um, it's a gummy bear. This is from Jen at Hand Stitch Life. But, so I did all this, and um, if you're new to the podcast, I'm going to share some information about myself. Um, I am very, I, I'm not embarrassed by this. This is just what I, what I do. It's what I do. There's nothing wrong with it. I knit during church um, every week without fail. Um, and so that was my progress during church <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Fun fact, I got a lot done. It was great. It was great. Um, and in fact, a friend of mine who was sitting in front of, um, Sam and I, she, uh, we were tearing down after our service, um, cause we meet in a school. We were tearing down and she was like, I heard your knitting needles behind me and it was very soothing. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but I appreciate that, <laughs> that statement. I'm so sorry that that was, uh, disruptive. And she was like, no, it was very relaxing and soothing. And I was like, well, I'm glad I can help <laughs> with my knitting. Knitting needles clacking away. I find the sound of knitting needles very soothing. And especially since this is just knitting in the round with metal needles and it's like just going to town, I can get going very quickly and... I think it's kind of noisy and so I was doing my best to kind of keep things quiet during church because I didn't want to distract anybody but um, I was just knitting too fast apparently <laughs> but I appreciated her saying that that was uh, relaxing and very a uh, nice sound to hear behind her um, but yeah because of that I got a lot done it was great um, it's, this is a very fun pattern. This is super fun. Um, you have all this decoration up here, and then once you're done, all you have left is just fun color play, and then you don't have to worry about anything else. Also, if you're wondering, yes, in fact, you do get to knit everything once you um, finish the yoke, and then you'll turn it inside out, or right side out, I guess, for um, when you finish it. But, so what that means is, is that normally the the knits would be on the on the outside, right? So all the V's would be on the outside. It would look like these these little guys would be on the outside. That's what it would normally be like. Um, here's my Zvag. This is the right side, or it's on the outside. So see all the V's. Wonderful, wonderful, happy, happy. Um. But this, as a design element, which you can do this, you um, have your pearl side out, which I think is really um, a fun way to play with texture. It's also, it makes the yarn look different somehow because um, like you can see these are the V's, but when you flip it, like it just, it looks different. I don't know how, I don't know how to describe it, but it just looks more blurry in a really beautiful way. Um, so this side will be facing out when I wear it. And um, purling around and around and around and around and around for however long your body may be. Your sweater is not fun. <laughs> um, so thankfully, um, wool and pine the designers, they um, have you flip it inside out so then you, you can knit in the round and do the rest of the body. And it's not um, you purling upon um, inches and inches and inches, which is very nice. And I was wondering about that. I actually hadn't read that in the pattern. And then when I came to it, I was very pleasantly surprised. Otherwise, I was going to make it work and I was going to flip it inside on, on myself, by myself, on my own, whatever. Um, but yes, we're just flying now, and the, so another really fun thing about this pattern that is, it's very, like, 
it's a good template or palette to play with color. I know I mentioned this in the past couple weeks that I've been working on it, but it's fun to fade. You can fade it, you can do whatever you want with it. You can have three colors, you can have two colors, you can have as many colors as, many colors as you want, just as long as you meet the yardage um, that you need. Um, and so the when you start the fading striping sequence, there's there's not really any instruction of where to do that. And so I've just kind of been eyeballing it. I prefer to like, I say eyeballing it. I haven't actually been, eye well, I mean, I don't know. I've been just like specifically finding out when I need to start something else or start the fading process, the striping process. And I did math, wow and um, figured out when to start the first fading process and I have figured out when I'm gonna start the third fading process. Um, I am probably gonna put all of this in my Insta or my Instagram, my Ravelry um, project notes because I know that it's kind of confusing sometimes when you get a pattern and it's just like fade whenever you want. And it's like, but I would really like to know when ex what is a good place to fade I don't know I have no idea how do I even figure that out um so I will put that in my Ravelry project page if you are interested but ultimately what I did for the top is that I added all the chart rows together and got that number and then divided it in half and that half number was where I started fading because it did say the first bit the first fade it gives you kind of slight instructions kind of to start it looks better if you start it halfway through the chart so i knew that the chart the full chart charts the full yoke takes three charts and um if i wanted to be halfway then i would add them all up and divide it in half um so that's how i got that and then for the third color what i'm planning on doing is taking the body length that i am wanting to knit, which I don't remember at the time <laughs> or at this moment, um, but what I'm going to do, so I divided that in half kind of roughly and um, have accounted for the fact that the fading will also take a good amount of space as well. So in the end, I'll start the fading process earlier than half of the, the inches that I had planned. Does that make sense? I, I feel like I'm just saying words. Um, <laughs> I am saying words, but do they make sense? That is the real question. Um, but just, just because I have that fading sequence and then I want a good amount of space that I'm just knitting my third blue beach bunny because I really like that color and I want to showcase it because it's super cute. So that's my thought process. I don't know if any of that made sense, but I'm going to also write that out in my Ravelry show notes if you, or Ravelry project page, if you are interested. This is a super fun knit. There are also, there's a DK version. There's a long sleeve version. You can literally do whatever you want. You can put long sleeves on this summery one. It is just such a good like template, you can do so much, you can make it however you want. And again, that is just the beauty of knitting. It's the reality of knitting. You can do whatever you want, you can make it your own and it's uniquely yours. Okay, so I am noticing that I'm running out of space on my SD card, which normally I take care of before I record, but I forgot to do that today. So we're just gonna power on through. I only have one more project left to talk about. And um, this is my test knit that I'm working on for sh uh, Shanna Lines. Yeah, Shanna Lines Designs. Um, and this is the Recalibrate Top T. I don't remember but it's basically called Recalibrate and it is so much fun. I would also, I've never um, test knit for Shayna before, but she puts so much effort and information into her test testing groups and just her patterns in general. They are so informative and she like, 
I don't, I, it's just mind boggling. She recorded a video for us testers and like walked us through everything and was like, this is amazing. I love this. I have been given all the information and then some. I feel super connected to you. I feel super connected to my project. I'm really excited. You're clearly very excited. Like, it was just so exciting. It's just a bundle of excitement and we just, it was, yeah, it was just really cool. Um, I also didn't realize that she is an architect by trade, which I think is really cool because my dad is actually an architect. Um, so I felt connected to her in that way as well. But you can really tell that she has that like design, building, architectural feeling in her patterns just because of like how they're written, the way things are worded, just the general construction. Um, and it's also, I mentioned this last week, but I didn't really have anything to back my statement up because I hadn't actually started knitting it yet. This is what I have so far. I realize that it doesn't look like anything, but it makes so much sense. And it's just like, huh, I love this. This is so cool. This is so unique. Um, this is very modular, kind of. So you knit in different directions. You pick up stitches. There's not really... As far, as far as I'm aware, I don't believe there's any seaming. I have something in my eye. Um, but it reminds me of the, and I'm showing this to you inside out, um, the Penguono by Stephen West because you do similar things in that like you pick up stitches along the side and then you just knit in opposite direction. You kind of pick up on both sides as you go up and you just do all this other fancy stuff and I think it's super cool and it's so much fun and again it's a really great template or palette to play with color because I knew that I wanted to use these two colors as my main striping and these are Heather uh, Heathered Handmaids this is her sock base the gray is eraser dust and the blue is robin's egg and I have been saving these skeins for like the perfect project they were gonna be in a shawl but like I this had to be and so then I went stash busting and pulled like together a pink palette and then pulled together a blue palette and could not decide. I went to friends, I asked people's opinions, and then someone someone in the tester group um, suggested that I use all of them. And I was like, oh, I do like that idea. So in fact, I am doing that. We do have a front and a back. My front is pink. My back is blue. And I am so loving how this is turning out. And this is very random striping. There was no, it's just kind of like knit a little garter strip type thing. Play around with color as you will. Um, so yeah, this is the front. This is kind of how it's gonna be. This is my left side. Indeed, this actually is my left side. <laughs> um, and so through fancy construction and magic of her pattern, it will all come together and just be this amazing, cool thing. And I can flip it around. So if I want the blue in the front, I can wear the blue in the front. If I want the pink in the front, I can wear the pink in the front. And so there's more trim sections where I'll be putting in the pink and the blue and I'm just really looking forward to playing around with that. I really have no idea what exactly I'm going to do. I will probably figure it out as I'm doing it. <laughs> I have no actual plan. Um, but again, I think that's a really like another amazing thing and a beauty of knitting because you can make it your own, but also modular knitting because you really can like make things up as you go pretty much as you knit the separate things and connect them and all that jazz. And it's just a big puzzle with color and then you're creating something. And I think this is gonna be such an amazing summery top and I'm just so excited to wear it. And I'm so excited to be a part of this test knit because it's just a great group of people. Um, and you can tell that Shane is also very, very passionate about it. And I think that just adds so much to the experience and just the pattern and all of her patterns in general. Um, so if you have not checked out uh, Shanna Wines Designs, 
on Instagram and on Ravelry and on her website. I would highly recommend you going and doing that. They're very, they look complicated in their construction, but they're written so clearly, like it would not be a problem at, at all for um, someone who doesn't have a whole lot of like sweater experience or, um, I would say you need some knitting experience, but we don't need a ton. And she also um, provides a lot of like very clear um, pictures in her pattern. So if you like don't know how things are supposed to go or whatever, then their pictures are there, which is super awesome. I'm not sure if she has any video tutorials um, connected with her patterns, but I could be completely wrong about that. But either way, it's super informative, very, very doable if you have very little knitting experience or little sweater experience. I would highly, highly recommend these patterns. So that is all that I have for you guys this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I feel like this was a very lackluster week, but you know, again, it's the reality. We're just chugging along, knitting when we can, resting when we can. Resting is important and needed and watching the sleeping cat and just absorbing his energy, <laughs> his sleeping energy. Mm, also all the laundry to fold, but we won't worry about that right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I have show notes, yarn store information, social medias, all the places. If you have any questions about anything or if you just want to say hello, please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram and just say hi. I would love to chat with you. Um, I'm just very honored that you are here and spending time with me. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and you continue to have a wonderful week. If you have crafty plans, I hope that they are successful. I have lots of crafty plans. I'm just making all the things. I am hoping um, that I will have more progress. Also, I completely forgot to say this, so we're gonna say this now, um, because best time. Um, because next Monday is Memorial Day here in the States, I will not be recording next Monday, so I will actually see you in two weeks, um, which gives me more time to make more progress on things, you know? Um, Sam and I are going on a little trip um, to we've just found a little Airbnb out in the middle of nowhere and we're just gonna relax and it'll be really nice So I'm not going to worry about the podcast this week this coming week um, and Yeah, I'll just I'll be back the following week with a fresh episode I will have started work by then so that's super awesome if you are in the spring area Or if you're visiting or anything like that if you want to come hang out with the pearly girls They are a wonderful group of women and um it's just a great store. So that is very exciting. More progress, just progress on everything. Hopefully by then I will have a finished summer sorrel. Wouldn't that be cool? Because I would really like to be able to take pictures when we go to this fun little Airbnb this coming weekend. It'll be fine. I just have, I have like half a body and like cuffs to do. It's totally fine. I'm definitely going to get that done. Um, is that everything? I think I've said everything. <sighs> My mind is just drawing a blank. I think I've said everything. Anyway, so let's just leave it at that. Thank you again so much for watching this episode. Thank you for hanging out with me while I ramble and rant and just kind of stare into space. <laughs> also, the parts that I will have edited out, but the times that I'm just browsing Instagram while recording, um, you are wonderful. I appreciate you. And I will see you guys in two weeks with hopefully a lot of knitting progress to show you. So, bye!